Hi everyone, it's James here and in this tutorial we're going to be taking another landing page design and recreating it in HTML and CSS. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at the typography and also how the design appears on a mobile device. So let's take a look at the design and start coding it up in HTML and CSS. Okay, so this is the design that I found and this is what we're going to be coding up in HTML and CSS today. It's actually just an image of the design itself, we don't have any of the creative assets. But what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and got this pairs image and extracted it from the image and removed all the text and so forth like that. So we've actually got that as an asset in the GitHub repository. So if you want to go ahead and download the code so you can follow along, there'll be a link to the code in the description below and I'll also put a link to this design if you want to check it out too. So the things we're going to be adding are the header and this text up here and also the text in the centre of the image here too. And we're going to be looking a little bit at typography in this tutorial so we'll be choosing some fonts for these uh, bits of text here. And we'll also be looking later on at how to make this responsive so that it looks good on mobile devices too so keep watching to see how that's done. So let's head on over to our text editor so we've got a blank template to start us off and the first thing I'm going to do is just create the all of the markup for the page so we're going to dump this all into the HTML so we've got everything on the page and then we can just start styling with our CSS. So I'll start off by putting an element at the top here uh, with a class of page wrapper. So just a simple div that's going to be covering the entirety of the page. And we'll also create a header element at the top there as well so this will create the actual text that's at the top of the page. And in there I'm going to put a div with a class of container and because we're dealing with navigation it makes sense to use a nav element here and we'll have a heading level 1 tag which be the kind of logo text that we've got at the top of the page and the actual design is called pair.by so we'll stick with that for the text at the top of the page there. And the next thing we want is the actual menu items themselves so we'll create an unordered list and inside of there we'll have some list items each containing an anchor tag. Let's just say we'll go for four of those. Let's just fill out the href attributes here. And then for the actual menu items uh, in the design, uh, I believe the text is actually Russian, um, so I'm not really sure what these uh, actually represent, uh, but we'll just create our own menu items for our design. So we could put something like about products, services, and also contact. So the kind of things that you might see on a typical navigation on a website. So let's save that and see what we've got. So we've got our HTML markup appearing there now, so that's all good. And then that's all we actually need for the header. So I'm going to come out of the header element here, and I'm going to create a new section element, uh, which has a class of hero. So this will contain this text here where we've got Creative Design Studio and our call to action button. So we'll be putting the markup in here for that. And again, I'm going to create a container class to hold all of our additional elements and I'm going to then use a h2 element because we've already used a h1 tag at the top of the page so this is obviously good for SEO purposes to let the uh, search engines know what the page is about or what it's written re reference to and then although this text down here will be bigger uh, we're going to use a heading level 2 tag. Uh, I'm not an SEO expert so I could be wrong on that but this is obviously semantically better for our page markup. So we're going to put a span inside there which has the uh, creative text so that we can target that and uh, change the colour of it a bit later on. And then we'll have design studio is the rest of the text. And then there's a paragraph tag under that that has the uh, filler text as well. So I'm just going to fill that with some lorem ipsum text but we probably don't need as much as we've got there. So let's uh, bring it back to about here. Maybe we'll add some more in there in a second to see how that looks. And then the final thing that we just need in this hero section is the actual call to action button. So I'm just going to create a button. And again, in the design, there is some uh, call to action uh, that's been placed here. I'm not really sure what that would actually say, um, but we'll just say find out more. Maybe we could say something like get in touch if it's supposed to be a design agency. And that will be a button that will uh, be clickable to take the user off to some other part of the site, no doubt. So that is all of the markup that we're going to need for our page. So we've got all of our HTML in place. Uh, and as you can see, all of the markups appearing here, but it needs styling. And it's quite interesting to see that this is the markup that we need to actually display our site. But simply by adding some CSS rules, we can actually transform this into the design that we've got. So let's make a start of transforming our HTML markup into our design. So we'll head on over to our CSS file. I'm actually using SAS in this example so I can use some of its features. Uh, and the first thing I'm actually going to do is set up some variables that we can use throughout the style sheet. So I'm going to set up a variable for white um, and I'm just going to change this to a sort of off-white color. Uh, 
a bit too gray there. So just nudge it down a little bit so that it's not a pure white color. And I'm going to do the same thing for black as well. So we'll start off with a solid black color and then just lighten it ever so slightly. And we're also going to use a gray color at some points as well for some of the text. So let's start off with white and then we'll go down to a reasonably gray color. So something around here would be good. And then obviously there's some yellow text on the page as well. Um, so I've actually extracted that as a hex value already. So it's FCE131. And also the background of the actual page itself is kind of like a charcoal gray or black color. Um, so I've also got that stored as a hex value too. So we'll just save that in a variable called background. And that is hash 151D20. Okay, so we've got some variables holding our colors for the page. Uh, let's target some of the base elements to start off with. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is target the HTML tag and set its font size to 14 pixels. So this will just ensure that any of our relative M's are matched to this font size value here. And I'm also going to set the height to 100% so that the HTML tag takes up 100% of the page. And then let's target the body tag as well. So uh, I'm just going to do some resets to start off with, taking off the margin and padding that exists on the body tag. And I'm also going to set the height of the body tag to 100% as well. So before we go any further, I'm going to actually set up the typography for the actual text on the page here. So if we look at the design, uh, the first thing is we want some kind of handwritten or display font here at the top. Uh, and then we want here to have some kind of fairly plain sans serif font. Uh, and indeed here at the bottom, we want a nice display font without any uh, serifs on. And obviously we want this uh, creative text to be quite uh, bold as well, to be quite thick. So let's pick out some fonts and I've just gone over to Google Fonts to actually uh, do this for us in this tutorial. Uh, so let's go over to the categories to start off with and we'll pick our display font first. So let's get rid of sans serif, serif and monospace. And let's type something into the sentence here. So we're going to be using pair by for the actual logo text itself. Okay, so some these are some examples that we could use for our tutorial. Um, this one's a little bit too messy. Uh, lobster looks quite good as well. Let's just go back to the design and have a look at that. You can see it's got some kind of handwritten effects, but it's still quite neat. So let's go back and have a look again. And actually, uh, Pacifico down here, that actually looks very similar to it. So let's uh, just compare that. So let's go for Pacifico because that actually looks like the same font. Okay, so let's select this style. So there's only the one style of regular at 400 weight, um, but that's fine because we're only going to be using it in one place and it looks to be the right weight already. And the next thing we want to do is actually get another font over here for uh, this text as well and also the additional uh, menu text. Uh, so that will be a sans serif font. So let's go over here and go back to the first page we're on, like Google Fonts. Uh, so we'll remove display handwriting and we just want, oops, not serif, we want, we want sans serif. So in the text we'll just type in creative and we want something that's quite sharp and crisp, um, especially on the uh, edges of the lettering. So uh, you can see here this C for example, uh, it's got a nice sharp edge on there. So uh, some of the options we've got there. So we've got the um, Roboto font there. Um, it's okay, um, but it's not quite got that sharp edge. It's kind of uh, curved all the way around. Um, Open Sans, slightly better. What else have we got here? Um, Source Sans Pro looks to be pretty good. Um, the creative text here for Montserrat actually looks to be uh, better because there's a little bit of better spacing on it. Um, so let's go for Montserrat for this example anyway. Um, I'm sure some of the other fonts would be a good too, um, but we've got some nice options here as well. So let's pick out the regular style here um, and also we'll go for a medium font as well in case we need that somewhere. And then finally we'll go for um, we'll go for extra bold here. So that's uh, going to be for the actual hero text itself uh, that's selected in yellow. Um, okay, so um, that should be enough for our fonts, at least for the moment. So let's grab uh, this link uh, that Google Fonts provides us. So let's just go back and put that into our HTML markup and we'll just pop it just before our style sheet occurs there. So uh, let's just line this up here. And if we save that, it should then make the fonts available for us throughout our styles. So let's head back there. And Google Fonts also provides us with the uh, CSS rules that we need here as well. Uh, so I'm just going to be lazy and copy these uh, onto my clipboard and go back here. And what we'll do uh, for the actual uh, body itself, uh, we'll just stick with Montserrat for that for the moment. 
and we'll come back and use the Pacifico text for the uh, H1 tag. Uh, actually, we can put that in there now, so we'll stick that uh, just here for the moment for that rule. And you can see the heading level 1 tag has been updated uh, to look a little bit like the design. Okay, so we're going to move on now to start doing the rest of the styling. And the first thing we're going to do is target the page wrapper. So if you remember, that's the class that we apply to the overall div that's wrapping the entire page uh, after the body tag. And we'll just make sure the height of that is 100%. And to get started, what we'll do is we'll say our, our background image. In the actual folder for our project, we've got another folder called image, and inside there is pairs.jpg, which as you can see is the image of the pairs there. And obviously the background repeat needs to be set to no repeat. And I'm actually this time on this project going to set the background size to contain. So that will just ensure that the background image is contained to the uh, div that it's being assigned to. And you can see that this yellow circle will actually uh, line up nicely to the left hand side of the page. So just as a bit of a side note, I did toy with the idea of actually creating these circles manually, uh, maybe creating like a div and then positioning them absolutely on the page. Um, but there's some quite nice effects that we'd miss out on with that uh, because you can see this yellow circle here for example is kind of like behind the bubbles that are coming off the pair and it's also just a bit of a nightmare to position these items correctly when you're resizing the page and it's not really causing a problem in the image so it makes a smart design choice to actually leave them in the image itself. So the other thing I'm going to do is just make sure that the background colour for the overall page wrapper is set to our background uh, colour that we've got, so that anything, any white space is changed to the uh, black ground colour itself. And so now the page looks a bit more seamless. Uh, we'll start working on the header next. And the first thing I'm going to do there is take any padding off the header that's uh, already set. And then we'll target the nav element that's inside of there. So we're going to use our faithful uh, flexbox container uh, for our nav uh, container itself. So we're going to set the display of the nav element to flex, which will make sure all of the uh, content inside of there is lined up in a row. And I will just actually uh, pull the H1 tag here and just pop it into the nav element there, just so that we make sure we're selecting the right H1 element, even though we've only got one on our page at the moment. Uh, but the first thing we want to do with that actually is to set the color to uh, white. And we'll use the white variable that we created at the start of our SAS file. That is very white still, so let's actually uh, go in and knock that down a little bit because it's quite uh, bold on the page there at the moment. Let's see if that makes... That's a little bit better, yeah. It's a shame you can't change this font weight because I think that's a little bit too heavy for this uh, design, but well, that's okay. We'll keep it as it is for the moment. And what we'll do is we're going to set the font size to 2 rems, so that should work out as uh, 28 pixels. And that's looking okay for the moment. And with that done, we'll look at the unordered list as well. So the first thing we'll do is set the list style uh, type uh, to none, just to remove the bullet points that are there. And we don't want those for this design. And we want to line them up in a row as well. So we'll set the uh, display to flex. And we want them all to align up with the actual logo itself. So we'll say align items is center. And you might be able to see the colors a bit off-putting at the moment, but you can see that the actual uh, items themselves are lined up nicely in the center with the H1 tag. Okay, so inside of the unordered list, let's target each individual list item itself. And we're just going to put some padding on the left and right to space out those menu items. And then for each individual anchor tag that's inside there, uh, we'll then set the font weight. And we'll say 500, just to make them slightly more bold than usual. And I'm going to use the gray color that we stored in the variable. Um, maybe because we've dropped that white a little bit, we'll just um, do the same thing with our gray, just so there's a bit more of a distinction between the two. That looks a bit better. And also we don't really want the underlining on the links as well. So we'll say for text decoration, we'll set that to none. Okay, so our menu's looking uh, pretty good at the moment. Um, the only problem is it's kind of really jammed into the left-hand corner here. Um, but I did, if you remember in the markup, uh, I did put this uh, container class uh, inside of the header element. So we're going to set up some rules for that. And I'm going to take it outside of the header element because I want to make this kind of a, a global class style. And I'm just going to set the width to auto and put some margin of uh, 300 pixels, not 3000, 300 pixels on the left and right. Okay, so that's put the uh, container in the middle of the page there. Um, you'll see it a bit better when we actually open up and close our text editor, um, but that's where we want it to be at the moment. 
So with that done, we can then move on to this hero section. So let's actually close down our header that we've just created here. And still inside of our page wrapper, we'll target the section uh, with the class of hero. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually push it down uh, quite a lot by putting its padding top value to six rems. And then we'll target the H2 tag that's inside of there. And we're going to set the font size, uh, something quite large. We want it to be, say, three rems. And we'll set the color. Um, we'll set it to the white color, so all of the text should change white. And we'll set the font weight to quite a light font weight, just make sure it's 400. And that gives us the text that we're looking for. Uh, but don't forget on the design itself, uh, we've got this uh, creative uh, word is in big bold letters, and it's obviously colored yellow. So we actually put the uh, creative word in a span. So we can target that span inside of our H2 here. So the first thing we're going to do is set that font size to be massive. So we'll say it's uh, six rems. And also we want to set the color to yellow as well. So we'll use that yellow variable. And we want it to be really bold as well. So we'll set the font weight to be 800. So this is the design studio text is actually appearing on a second line at the moment. But if we actually open up the design a little bit more, you can see that it's it's not. It's only because the page size was reduced. So it was being split onto two lines. But uh, if there was enough space, it would be on one line. So what we can do for our span, uh, if we set the display to block, we can force that second bit of text, the design studio, to always be on the second line. OK, so I think that's looking pretty good. Um, the only thing we need to target inside of here as well is the P tag. So I'm going to set that to have a max width of 400 pixels. And obviously, we want the color uh, to be gray. It could probably do with a bit more text in there to match the design, but that's uh, fine for the moment. Oh, I'm forgetting we also need to do the button as well, the call to action. So let's target the button that's inside of our hero. And obviously, the first thing we want to do is set the background color uh, to be yellow. Uh, we want to set a good amount of padding on this as well. So we'll say uh, one rem on the top and bottom and three rems on the left and right. Uh, we'll also add a bit of border radius. Uh, so uh, we want to go quite a bit. So we'll say two rems, make it into a pill type shape, uh, make the font size a bit bigger. So we'll say um, let's go for 1.5 rems, maybe a little bit too much. Let's go 1.3. Uh, let's remove the border as well, uh, just to get rid of that gray border around it. And we want to push it down quite a bit from the uh, P tag itself. So we'll say margin top is two rems, uh, maybe 2.5, just a little bit extra. OK, and that's now looking pretty good. It's spaced out quite nicely. And you can see now I've opened up the page a little bit. You can see the container is uh, sitting pretty much in the right place where I want it to be. Uh, I do notice, though, that the uh, nav uh, elements, uh, so this navigation here, should be pushed to the right hand side. Uh, so let's go back to our header and in our nav, we just want to make sure here that we've got justify content. Uh, we'll go space uh, between. So that'll just push the nav elements over onto the right hand side. OK, so that is, in essence, pretty much our design done. Um, if we just open up the page a bit further, you can see that it's uh, appearing quite nicely in a sort of full screen mode. But obviously, as we shrink the page, uh, we've got some problems. You can see this uh, text here is kind of starting to cover the background image, which is fine. But because they're quite similar colors, um, it makes the text a bit harder to read. And if we go a bit further, uh, you can see the nav has been completely lost. And because we've got this margin on the left hand side here, the design just doesn't look great. So we're going to fix that now with some media queries. So let's go back to a more larger desktop design. And then we'll go and create some media queries in our CSS down here. So we'll say at media, screen, and when we've got a max width of, uh, say, 12, uh, 60 pixels, what we'll do then uh, is target the container class that we've got inside of there and set a margin. Uh, and we want to set the margin top and bottom to be zero always, uh, but we'll reduce the margin left and right from 300 down to 200 pixels. So you can see now it's actually appearing uh, a bit more central where the design actually had it initially. And if we go a bit further to the left hand side and give us some more screen space, you can see it stays uh, pretty much where it should be. So that's all good. And we'll create another breakpoint um, down here too. So we'll say media screen and oops, max width is 960 pixels. 
what's I'm actually going to do at this breakpoint is actually reduce the overall font size. So we'll say the font size for the entire document has gone down to 12 pixels, which will make sure all of the text is shrunk slightly so that we've got a bit more space on the page. So let's just test that out. So uh, if we scroll down to about here, let's open up our developer tool so we can see what pixel value we're actually at. Uh, so yeah, there we go. So see now we're at 970 pixels and as soon as we hit down just below 960, you can see the text shrinks a little bit and it just gives us some more space on the page. Okay, so I'm going to add one more breakpoint as well um, at media and screen and when the max width is 760 pixels. I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to first of all take off all of the margin from the container. So we'll make sure the width is 100% and then we'll just say the margin is zero. Oops, I've got a colon there instead of a semicolon. And then also we'll target the page wrapper itself. So this is our div that has the rest of the page in there. So we'll say uh, the header that's inside of it. Um, we're going to add some actual padding to it this time. And for the section hero, we need to adjust the padding on that as well and just say we just want two rems on the left and right. Okay, so uh, let's just scroll down so we get our browser to be less than 760 pixels. So this would kind of be the mobile view, I guess. So uh, you can see we've got some space over here on the left-hand side. And we're just making sure that the header and the actual hero element itself is making the best use of the space we've got on the page by pushing everything over to the left-hand side. So we could, for example, just go even smaller, say 600 pixels. And although we've got a little bit of overlap with the yellow text here, the design still looks pretty good on a smaller device. So one final thing just before we finish up, um, you might have noticed that at larger sizes, this orange circle kind of gets in the way of the uh, nav elements themselves up here, and especially because they're a kind of a, a quite a light gray color. They can be a little bit difficult to see. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not much we can do with that because of the way the image has been set up. But what we could do is just try and make the image a bit darker at the top of the page. So one way to do that would be to open up this image in some kind of tool like Photoshop and actually add a dark gradient to be uh, increasing as we go to the top of the page. So we can actually do that with CSS as well without affecting the original image. So if we go up to the section where we're actually putting the background image here for the page wrapper, we can apply our own linear gradient. So if we use the linear gradient function, and I'm just going to put the first argument as zero degrees, so this will go from top to bottom. And I'm going to use some transparent values, and I'm just going to use a solid black color and set the opacity to it as zero. So this will be at the bottom of the page and we'll have zero opacity of black gradient. And then at the top, again, we'll use a black color, but this time we'll set an opacity value. And just as an example, I'll set it as one to start off with. And don't forget our comma after the linear gradient. And you can see now we've got a strong black color at the top of the page. Uh, so obviously the navigation text is a lot more readable, but we've lost quite a lot of the definition of the image. So we could reduce that to say 0.5. And you can see here, we can still see the image quite well, um, but we've got the image at the top is a lot darker so that the nav elements themselves uh, stand out a little bit more. And of course, we could always raise the value of our gray variable up a bit just to make the text stand out a bit more if we need to. So it's just all about playing around with those different colors and dealing with the contrast on the page. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned a bit about typography and also responsive design, and also just taking a design and recreating it in HTML and CSS. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials, and I'll see you next time.